Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel many times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last couple of years. They are still a relatively new addition to the Swedish beer scene, I should point out, but I think it's most definitely fair to say that they're best known for their different kinds of New England hazy, whatever you want to call them, IPAs. Now, the beer that we're going to have a look at today is a style that I know these guys can do very very well it's also a beer that i've heard very good things about so i have to say i'm quite curious to see what it's going to have in store for us this is one of their latest releases through its system bolagic here in sweden of course so yeah let's crack on with this one then and see what we have hopefully it's another good beer hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always i hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well so uh yeah for this review then we are going to head to urebro out to the west of stockholm and we're going to have a look another beer from Apex Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called Doom Rider. It comes in at 8% ABV and this one is a New England Hazy Imperial Double whatever you want to call it, IPA. So uh, yeah, this beer was released as part of the local Osmoskalik assortment through System Bolaget here in Sweden for September of 2022 although it was available for a little while through Glassbanken and other places uh, before that. But uh, yeah, this should be quite interesting. This one's got quite an interesting hop bill in it, so we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But yeah, always nice to return to Apex, so let's see what this one is going to have in store for us. So, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done it from Apex Brewing Company before, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. And it's always great to see the support that you guys are giving the channel. It's massively, massively appreciated. And remember, you can check out the playlists of beers from different countries. You will find this one in the Swedish playlist. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Apex Brewing Company. So Apex Brewing Company find their roots in Nora, which is a little bit to the north of Örebro, and the company was founded there back in 2017 by Daniel Gatchitz and Niklas Lundgren. Both of these guys are musicians, and you will find this in Sweden. There's a lot of musicians tend to go and start up craft breweries, but Niklas played in the band 59 Times the Pain, whereas Daniel played in The Voice of a Generation. And I do to go and check out these bands, actually. I've been reviewing enough of the beers. I really should go and check out their music as well. Uh, but Daniel and Niklas are responsible for the brewing operations, but there are a few others involved in the company as well. So this is Leif Carlson. Ola Eriksson and Roger Helm and they're taking care mostly of the, the kind of business and sales side of things from what I understand. But in the early days they started off with a 500 litre brew kit and six small fermentation tanks and they were selling their beers just in the local area around Nora and Ourobro before they eventually got them into Sistembolaget and I believe that was 2018. I reviewed the first beer that they released through Sistembolaget here on the channel and that was simply called Single Hop if I remember correctly, a, a Citra. New England IPA. Uh, but over 2018, they brewed around 35,000 litres of beer with about 35 different varieties, all of which were New England hazy IPAs. But then they brewed, they expanded a little bit and brewed 120,000 litres across 2019. Uh, over the following years, they continued to build up their portfolio. They started brewing a few different styles and things as well. Uh, but in summer of 2021, they announced that they were going to move to a new premises in the Baytorp district of Urbro that autumn and they have moved there now. The new brewery saw them buy a 2000 litre brew kit in addition to keeping their 500 litre one as a pilot brewery from what I understand and they've also installed several new tanks there as well. This has allowed them to kind of dramatically increase their capacity and as of September 2022 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have now produced 115 different kinds of beer according to Untapped. But um, yeah, that is everything I can tell you about Apex Brewing Company for the moment. Uh, like I said, they're very, very well respected when it comes to the New England Hazy IPA. It's one of the most respected here in Sweden, of course. For me, these guys, Fermenterna and uh, Duck Pond are probably the newer generation breweries that you should watch out if you're interested in that style. But Apex have been doing a few lager beers recently, the Kella Pills and the Kella Mertzen are definitely worth checking out, actually. So yeah, if you get the chance to try those, I would highly recommend them. 
But uh, yeah, as I say, that's everything we really need to say about Apex Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. If you want to learn more about the different beers, you can check out the untapped profile. And um, yeah, you can uh, watch some of my older reviews as well if you want to learn about some of the older beers too. So let's crack on and have a little look at this beer itself then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on it once again before we... Open up there, you can see the Doom Rider sitting on top of the Apex, sort of Illuminati thing as I always call it. You can see one of the symbols of Apex Brewing over the side here, the ABC. And this is another thing you'll often find on the cans is music, people and beer. Um, this is a 440 milliliter can. If memory serves me correctly, I paid 55 Swedish kroner for this. So that is €5.50, about £5 sterling and I guess somewhere in the region of six dollars American just for those of you watching in different parts of the world but yeah as we say 440 milliliter can this one and uh, yeah nicely presented as you always get from uh, from Apex Brewing it's also got a quote on this one so uh, pestilence for what you have had to endure and what you have put others through so yeah <laughs> there we go but anyway I wrote the specs of this beer down with the brewery notes. So this one, as we said earlier, is an 8% New England double IPA. It's hopped with Mosaic, Malterre and Victoria's Secret. So Mosaic we know quite well. 14% alpha acid, American hop, gives you lovely kind of tangerine notes. Victoria's Secret we also know fairly well. That's 12% alpha acid, Australian, and it gives you a really nice kind of juicy mango, passion fruit, pineapple sort of thing. Whereas Malterre is one that we have had before, but not in quite some time, if memory serves me correctly. Now, Malterre is kind of unusual because it's it's a New Zealand hop but it's got a huge alpha acid to it it's got about 17% alpha acid but it gives you this it kind of gives you like a big uh, passion fruity grapefruit sort of thing and it's also known for its piney resin characteristics as well haven't had that hop in quite some time so this is going to be interesting first time we've had it in an apex beer if memory serves correctly uh, but the malt base in this one is extra paleo malts naked oats torrefied oats and it also uses a WLP 66 London fog yeast so um yeah I like the sound of this one so that's your kind of breakdown of the beer itself uh let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting very curious about this for sure so yeah I can't remember when the last double IP I had from Apex was was it last month yeah we've had a few regular IPAs from them recently but yeah they always tend to be pretty good and I always enjoy reviewing the new apex beers on the channel but um yeah there we go so um yeah anyway as you can see this is poured quite nicely the head on this is beautiful actually so before that disappears you can see that it's poured with a finger and a bit of a frothy i would say very slightly cream colored head it's not, let me just let that the camera focus on that, there you go. You can see lots and lots of very small foamy bubbles. There are one or two slightly bigger bubbles toward the top of the head. But um, yeah, it's got a lovely foamy head on it, this one. And I would say very slightly cream coloured, not perfect white. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass. At the bottom, uh, it does look very, very nice. So yeah, in terms of the... Um, in terms of the colour of this one then, it's very, very bright yellow. It's almost like a mango juice colour. I always like comparing New England IPAs to different fruit juices because that's just what they remind me of. But yeah, lovely kind of bright uh, yellow mango juice colour. So remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel aging that you do or any adjuncts that you put into the beer will play a role as well. But when it comes to New England IPAs, we don't often, or, or any kind of IPA come to think of, we don't really have to care about um, those adjuncts and things like that. But yeah, level of haze on this one for an 8%er is kind of what we'd expect as well. So the level of haze depends on the, the yeast that you use, the oat content and the wheat content. There's no real rule about going up the alcohol scale with these, you know. Theoretically speaking, it should get hazier the further up the alcohol scale that you go, but in practice that isn't always the case. It can vary from brewery to brewery and even beer to beer and so on. But yeah, the level of haze you get in this one is pretty impressive. It is a pretty opaque beer, but uh, yeah, for an 8% New England double IPA, you would kind of expect that to be honest with you so um yeah 
I think that's everything we need to say about the appearance of this beer. So I think we should go on and have a little look at the aroma and see what that has in store for us. Oh yeah, this is quite interesting. The other thing I've just uh, noticed with this is this one. Uh, it says that it contains wheat, but that wasn't actually listed on the, uh, the untapped profile for the beer. It does say on the can though, so maybe they're just using like a kind of standard typeset with that. But yeah, the malt base that it mentioned on untapped didn't mention wheat. And I was thinking as soon as I smelt this one, it's actually very, very smooth. And uh, it really leans toward the oaty side of things. And this is one of the interesting things about trying the Apex beers. Yes, you're trying the same style pretty much all the time. I would love to see Apex do like a proper old school, caramelly, West Coast, bitter, double IP. I would love to see them do something like that. But what you learn from a brewery like Apex that specialise in this one style, you can learn all the different directions that it can go. You know, you can learn a little bit about the different malts and things and how they behave and, you know, how the different hops behave in these uh, in, in one style so you know there are there are for me being like a, someone who wants to learn a lot about beer it's kind of uh, it's a, apex can offer you quite a few interesting uh, or breweries like apex as well can offer you very interesting perspectives but the first impression i have of this beer is it's, it's quite thick and bready it really leans toward the ot side of things the green component is quite floral and it actually has a bit of brightness to it but you've also got a good little bit of a kind of lemony citrus to this beer too. This is quite an interesting one. Um, yeah, I really like how this um, how this goes together. Uh, aroma wise, it is pretty damn nice. So let's break this down and describe it a wee bit more in depth. So backbone of the beer, you get a little kind of smattering of a fresh, uh, fresh bread. You know, white hedgehog roll bread crust. That's absolutely there. There's a little bit of. Um, there is a little bit of a kind of Jacob's cream cracker sort of thing um, to this one. But yeah, there's a lot of like fluffy white bread and the bread actually smells quite dense. You know, you can smell quite a little bit of density to the sort of barley malt bread in this one. So yeah, that's quite interesting. Um, but torrified oats, if, that, if I remember correctly, that's when they're just like really, really dried. I forget exactly how they, uh, what the process is for the torrified oats. But yeah, there's a lot of oaty character to this one. As I've said in many reviews before, for me there are you know six directions really or six things you should think about with a New England IPA. The sort of farmhousey yeasty character, any rye and grainy side of things. These two are a bit more common in American brewed New England IPAs. I would point that out, particularly the ones from New England proper. Uh, but you've also got the wheaty bitiness, oaty creaminess, barley malt bread and also the kind of um, sweeter side of the um, uh, sweeter side of things as well but yeah the the malty side of this beer is really quite interesting um, and the thing with the oats is the oats in a New England IP will always give you an indicator of how old the beer is because you know the older it gets the drier they become but with this one you can smell it's um I think the fact that it's got torrified oats in it is making it a little bit more dry because you do get a good little bit of sweetness out of this beer uh, from the oats. And yeah, there is a little bit of that Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy type thing to this one. But um, yeah, you can smell that. There's a little bit of biscuit in there too. But yeah, lots of, yeah, you do get that little bit of kind of creamy oaty character, but there's a lot of oaty dryness to this one. And that actually is making the bready part of the malt base seem really quite dense. So the malt base on this one actually, this is what I'm meaning, like Apex, Breweries that specialise in one style like this can really teach you all the different nuances that you can sometimes find. Um, so this is really quite interesting for sure. Um, yeah, I like this. Um, yeah, the malty side of things is, is interesting in that. There is a little bit of a kind of, the more you smell of it, the more you get that like, sort of crackery, woody type vibe out of the beer. And uh, yeah, as I say, it gets a big thumbs up for me. You've still got a little fruit, fruit fly going around, get lost. Yeah, but um, yeah, oh, I think that's what it is. I've got a stout. I've got a stout can that I've drunk out over there. So he's been chilling on the stout can, having a having some scran, I guess. Yes. So um, yeah, I think that's everything we need to say about the malt base on this one. On the hoppy side of things, it's kind of what you'd expect. There's a good little bit 
Uh, you do get a little touch of earthiness out of this one. That's the mosaic, of course. There's a nice, quite bright floral aromaticity to it. And um, you also get quite a bit of an oily, zesty, grassy character to this one. And I'm guessing that's the Malteri, to be honest with you. And remember, New England IPAs rely mainly on late edition and dry hopping. So you've got three types. Early edition hopping, first hour of the warp boil, that gives you a lot of IBU. Uh, late edition hopping within the last half hour of the warp boil, a little bit of IBU, mainly flavour and aroma. Dry hopping after the warp boil, that gives you um, just flavour and aroma. New England IPAs tend to use the latter two, late and dry hopping, whereas West Coast IPAs also use a lot of early edition hopping. New England IPAs will have a little bit of early edition as well, we should point that out. Um, but yeah, the grassiness in this one is actually really quite zesty. And with the fruity, it's quite an oily green component as well. I should point that out. Um, but when it comes um, when it comes to the fruity side of this beer, it's quite interesting because you do get a little bit of that kind of... It's quite a mellow passion fruit you get from this one. So and that's interesting. Um, but... I'm also getting, I do get the juicy or the kind of oily tangerines as well. There's a bit of pineapple in there. So yeah, definitely a bit of passion fruit, a bit of pineapple and a good little bit of tangerine orange. But I'm also getting quite a bit of, I get quite a bit of limey character out of this one, like quite a pungent lime. And I'm wondering if that is the Malteri. I always remember Malteri had this really pungent uh, character to it and it could I remember reading that Malteri is good for like pilsners it's very good as a bittering hop actually and it's quite a nice one to give you the sort of uh, kind of peary lemony limey uh, flavours and a bit of the grapefruit bitterness that you might want in a kind of modern lager beer so you're getting a bit of that in this one um, but yeah I'm not getting too much in the way of like a strong grapefruit out of this beer as I was expecting from the Malteri more yeah, a kind of mellow, more mellow, juicy passion fruit. A little bit of pineapple in there as the tropical subtlety. And then some nice juicy orange and a bit of lime. So, yeah. It's a really interesting smelling beer, that one. But the more that you smell of it, the more it kind of sweetens up a little bit, actually. So the more I get more of the orange out of this one. But yeah, let's have a taste of this and see how we go. As I always say, take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of this one, uh, of your beers. But yeah, let's get stuck in. This is the Doom Rider New England Double IPA. Slange it, skull, cheers. Oh yeah. That is very nice. That is very, very nice. I'm going to say straight away to Apex once again. This is good. And this is quite an interesting one because you take it in and it has got a little bit of bite to it. It's got a little bit more kind of floral bitterness, but then it really just smoothens out nicely and you start to get the kind of sweetness from the oats and then the juiciness of the fruits starts to build up in this beer too. This is really nicely done. So again, a big, as I say, a big thumbs up to Apex Brewing for this one. They've pulled off a very nice beer here. Um, yeah. This is good. Um, yeah. To be honest, I would actually maybe go as far as saying, and it's nothing against any of the other beers I've had in recent times from Apex, but this one actually, I think this is one of the better New Englands that I've had from Apex over the last wee while. So like I say, it's a big thumbs up for me. I always enjoy reviewing the Apex beers, but this one just strikes me a wee bit more than some of the other ones I've had. So um, yeah, that's it. So let's break the flavour of this one down and describe it a wee bit more in depth for you then. So, <coughs> pardon me, middle third of your palate, you get a little bit of that kind of fresh white bread bread crust in the backbone for sure. So yeah, a little bit of fresh, um, you know, white bread, hedgehog roll sort of thing. And then on top of that, you've got this lovely, quite dense layer of white bread. You know, it is... It is actually quite thick, but it is quite fluffy at the same time. So I really like that. So yeah, quite a dense, um, yeah, quite a dense kind of fluffy um, 
white bread on top of that. So maybe in between the bread crusty layer, there's maybe a little bit of that Jacob's cream cracker, Knekebrud sort of thing. That takes a little bit of time to come out of the, the beer, actually. There is a good little... That, that does take a little bit of time to come out into the aftertaste. So yeah, a little bit of bread crust, um, a little bit of a kind of Jacob's cream cracker sort of thing. And then you've got that dense layer of big fluffy white bread, which I really like. And then on top of that, you start to get all the different kind of oaty characters to this beer. And as I say, the oats in this one come across quite differently to what I've had, um, to what I've had from oats in other beers in the past. So yeah, that is, for me, that is quite interesting. Um, yeah. Hmm. So on top of that white bready layer, you can feel down the middle line of your tongue, you get a little bit of this kind of porridgey, oaty type thing. Um, yeah, you get this kind of, so you get that more kind of porridgey, oaty thing going down the middle line of your palate there. But then, yeah, as you move out toward the edges of the palate, as you move out toward the edges of that middle third of your tongue, you can feel the oats get a little bit, there is a little bit of sweetness starts to come out of the oat, but then as you move out toward the edge of the, to move out toward the edge of the palate there, um, you start to get, a little bit more of a, you start to get a little bit more of that kind of oaty, that powdery oaty dryness out of the beer, which is interesting. So yeah, this is actually, it's quite a straightforward malt base, this one, but I think it really works. And as I say, I quite enjoy it. So yeah, this is definitely one of the more, the beer at the same time feels quite bready, but like I say, you do get some of that kind of oaty creaminess out of it, which I think is great. Um, yeah, I think that's, um, I think that is really quite nice in this one. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I really like that malt base of this. It takes a little bit of time to build up, but you start to get more and more sweetness out of it the more that you go into the aftertaste. So you can feel in the middle, the very centre of your palate, you get a little bit of that butterscotchy, butter candy sort of thing. So, yeah. You've got a little circle sitting on top of all the oats there, right in the middle of your palate, where you've got that butterscotchy, butter candy type thing. And that just gets sweeter and sweeter, I think, the further into the aftertaste you go. But like I say, this is a lovely, lovely beer, this one. So it's a thumbs up from me. Uh, in terms of the... Um, yeah, in terms of the, the back third of your palate then, so the border region between middle third and back third of your palate, you can feel there's a little bit of a kind of bready build-up. Uh, yeah, there is a little bit of a kind of bready build-up uh, in that border region there. But yeah, the base of the back third of your palate, the bread crust is a little bit more grainy. You can feel the, the white bready layer that I was talking about with this one. It's still quite dense, but it does feel a, a bit taller and a bit more airy. And on top of that, you can feel there's a little bit of that oaty dryness kind of pushes over into the back third of the palate, but then on top of that, you get the more airy, bready notes uh, out of the beer, and that is the um, that is the yeasty character. So uh, yeah, you get a little bit of a kind of crackery, woody, farmhousey sort of thing from that, which is quite nice. But definitely back third of the palate, the flavour is taller, and as you come further forward, it just condenses down a wee bit. So uh, yeah. That's quite nice in this one. Let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer then. So, back corners of the palate first. So yeah, back corners of the palate. You get a nice little bit of earthiness uh, there, but as you move further forward, you get the oily green component. You get the oily green component quite... Uh, the oily green component coming out of this one uh, is really nice. Um, so yeah, a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, yeah, as I say, a wee bit of earthiness and there as you move further forward, you start to get, you can feel a little bit of that almost piney resiny note from the, uh, from the Malteri in this one and that lingers into the aftertaste. You start to get, you get more of a kind of dankness out of this beer the further into the aftertaste you go, I feel, but on top of that, it's quite an oily floral note. There's a little bit of floral spiciness and uh, at the front corners of the palate there, but then round the front curve of the tongue, 
it's a little bit lighter and grassy and there is a wee touch of zestiness to it but again it's quite a wet oily green component that you get out of this beer but let's look at the front third of your palate and the um let's look at the front third of your palate and the the kind of fruity side of things So yeah, the fruity side of things with this beer then. At base of that front third of your palate instantly is kind of more smooth and bready, a little bit oaty. And then, yeah, you get a wee bit of the bready build up on the border region between middle and front third of your palate. And then the juicy fruity yes, so just roll their way out beyond that. But the fruits in this one are quite interesting. At the back of that front third of your palate, um, I hesitate to say grapefruit. It doesn't strike me as being quite as pungent as grapefruit, but it's not far away. So yeah, maybe... Yeah, as you go into the aftertaste, I think there's a little touch of grapefruit there. But yeah, as you move further forward from that, uh, and that'll be the Malteria that's giving you that. So you get that stronger grapefruit in there. Then as you move further forward from that, you can feel it mellows out into a more kind of oily passion fruit. And then there's a little bit of mango and pineapple as you reach the middle of that front third of your palate. And as you reach the, um, the kind of, as you reach the, the kind of front half, you start to get the more orangey tangerine notes from the mosaic in this one so yeah the back half is more about the Malteri and the Victoria's Secret and the front half is a little bit more about the uh, about the tangerine orange mosaic I do actually get a little touch of lime just on the tip of the tongue and I think that's the pungency of the Malteri because uh, I've had you know we've had mosaics so many times and we've had Victoria's Secret a lot as well but the, the little bit of limey character when I think about these two hops I think that is most likely to come from uh, Malteri and like I say that's quite a popular hop uh, to use in like lager beers in New Zealand it's quite a popular one just to give you that sort of you know sultana peri type thing and uh, the bit of limey character as well so yeah it's um this one I think is, is really interesting from its fruity perspective but I will say that's one of the best uh, that's one of the better IPAs I've had from Apex Brewing in recent times and that's not to say the other ones were bad this one I just find a little bit more interesting it more it suits me a little bit more, but like I say, it's a thumbs up from me. Um, yeah, so I think we can leave it at that for the flavour profile, this one. As I say, it gets sweeter, this beer, the further into the aftertaste you go. But yeah, mouthfeel-wise, uh, for me, this beer's pushing toward the top end of mid-body. The carbonation is very smooth. It does have a degree of cleanliness to the mouthfeel as well, but it actually starts to feel more and more... I don't know if I'd describe it as creamy. It's a little bit dry. It's it's creamy, but it still has a little bit of dryness to it, if that makes sense. Um, the, the IBU count on this, I think this has got a little bit more IBU to it. I think this is 40, maybe 50 IBUs. I pushed you. There is a little bit of that dankness from the Malteri kind of linger in there in this one. I wouldn't be surprised if that's 50 IBUs, to be honest with you, but always take my IBU counts with a pinch of salt, uh, because that's my weakest point of beer reviewing, for sure. Um, but yeah, the malt base in this one, as we said, it has a little bit of dryness, it's a little bit smooth, there is a touch of sweetness there, and that sweetness builds the further into the aftertaste you go. The fruitiness is nice and juicy as well, mixed between tropical fruit and more citrusy things, but I think it leans toward that more sort of citrusy, lemon limey character the further into the beer that you go. But overall, a very, very nice beer. And like I say, probably one of my favourite ones I've had from Apex over the last little while. So yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. So yeah, this was the Doom Rider, a New England hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, double IPA from Apex Brewing Company, now in Urubro, out to the west of Stockholm. Very well respected brewery. And I think this is probably one of my favourite uh, New Englands that I've had from these guys over the last little while. But yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Apex Brewing Company. And as I say, we will no doubt return to these guys very, very soon. Check out my social media, check out theirs, and I'll catch you guys later. Slange it, skull, cheers. Make sure you check out some Apex beers.